Perfect. Perfect. What's up, guys, and welcome to another episode of the Isn't It Crazy podcast. Today, I want to talk about masculinity. I know I can't say that word right, but I'm trying my best. So what does it mean to be masculine or be a man? Growing up, I thought, just like the Hollywood movies had shown me, that you either had to be this buff mechanic who fucked everything in sight or just somebody like a cowboy who knew how to shoot guns and hunt for his food and lived out in the desert. Or the cutthroat businessman with his nice suits and his ability to make deals everywhere he went. So when you grow up, you you learn that that's not true. And the only reason these guys were seen as real men or man's men was because they each had something in common. Each of them was passionate about something and they went for it. So they understood the good and they understood their bad. And they accentuated their good and tried to fix the bad, right? So what do I mean by that? They went from bad to good to great and other men saw what they were doing and they would say, oh man, that guy really knows how to fix a car or that guy really knows how to shoot or that guy really knows how to make a deal and dress nice. You're shining this light on you and you're doing what you want, right? But at the same time, they were looking at what they were bad at too. Uh, I think to become an all around man, you have to look at the good and Try your best to become better at it. And you have to look at your flaws and everything you lack in and working to fix that every single day of your life. Um, some problems are easy to fix. Some take trial and error. Um, nobody's perfect and nobody's going to get it right the first time. But I think if you consistently work at a problem every single day, you can only get better at it. That being said, don't just do the same thing every single day and expect different results. By definition, that would be crazy and it probably wouldn't work out very well. So you have to trial and error all your problems. Um, try something. If it doesn't work, oh well. Try the next day. Try that. If it works, maybe it works a little bit. So keep adding to that till the problem is fixed. So never settle for a mediocre result. Always try to Finish what you started. So if you could check both those boxes and do it at a consistent level, then you got to start thinking about what your responsibility to everybody around you is. Setting an example for not only your son, your brother, your friends, or your dad. It's understanding that these examples are going to shape who they are. I know growing up when I was little, I was told never to cry. A boy doesn't cry and you drink a cup of concrete and you get over it, right? But that was the example laid around by the men around me. And going forward, I don't think I'd set the sa same example. I think I would look at my son or my brother or my friend and tell them it, it's okay to cry. It's not okay to bottle up those feelings and then be angry and always focus on that anger and not being, not freeing yourself to become a better person. So setting an example like that is very important. Um, one of the examples I got taught when I was little by the men around me in my life was whether they were good or bad was that you provided. You you worked hard for your family and you manned up and you paid your bills and you take you took care of your, your children. And my dad and um, my brother-in-law aren't perfect, but that's what that's a, that's an example I got from them. And um, I'm very appreciative for that. So when you look at your son, say you have a kid or your brother, like a small brother, you have to be, you're the example, right? You're showing them what it means to be a man. So let them know that it's okay to have feelings. It's okay to pursue anything they want. If they want to become a ballerina, it doesn't make them less of a man. It just makes him a very good ballerina and he should be proud of the things that he's passionate about. So to the meathead or somebody who's just calling me a pussy by this point and making fun of the fact that I talk about feelings and I, if you ever see somebody trying to become a ballerina or something that just doesn't seem like the normal social manly thing to do and you have this urge to make fun of us for who we were trying to be 
and who you want to be, that urge to make fun of us is just your insecurities because we're poking at them. We're letting you know that we know our insecurities and it's okay. And your insecurities and your weak-minded ego can't take that. So you'll tell me that you're stronger and faster and richer and you're more masculine because you could get girls and other stuff like that. But in reality, you're hiding behind these braggadocious things because you because you're afraid to be who you really are so always keep that in mind if you're going to make fun of somebody ask yourself if are you just having a good time or are you are you doing it because your insecurities are are trying to hide behind these things that you think make you a man i guess so always remember to be a man means um, you don't have to be the strongest. You don't have to be the fastest or the smartest or the richest. You just have to be you. You have to be the best version of you. And so if you want something, work for it. If you feel something, say it and never stop pursuing the task of fixing your flaws. That's the best thing you could do to become the best man that you are. Um, don't try to be something you're not. Don't try to hide your insecurities behind these blankets or brags that maybe you have muscles, but you lack in other areas. Maybe you do have money, but you lack in other areas. Never try to hide your insecurities behind these things that are so shallow and really don't mean anything. As long as you're happy, as long as you're comfortable with who you are, then I think you, that your goals achieved and more power to you. So moving on to sports, I want to talk about Kawhi going to the Clippers and what a great move that was. Um, he didn't fall to the pressure of Toronto. He didn't get convinced by the Lakers to go to LA. I think it's the best move he could have done if he would have stayed in Toronto. It might have been the same thing as last year, but if he would have gone to the Lakers, that would have been the dumbest move he could probably could. Everybody's hyped about having AD and LeBron, and they were going to say that having Kawhi just meant that they were they had won the finals already. And to me... AD's, AD could never do it in, in, in the Pelicans. He wasn't the dude to take him over the top. He crumbled in the playoffs, and everybody's like, oh, he had 25 points average a, a season. But when you play with LeBron, your, your points are going to go down, and your productivity is going to go down because you have to share the time and the points with LeBron James. So I don't see AD doing a lot for the Lakers. I don't. I hopefully LeBron doesn't get injured again. But say LeBron does get injured, the Lakers are fucked anyway. So you could bring Cousins. You could bring in Rondo. At the end of the day, you could have Kuzma, and it, it's not gonna. It's not gonna fix a lot for them. Are they gonna be a better team? Sure, but they, last year they didn't even make the playoffs. So maybe this year they make the playoffs and they get booted out in the first or second round. But I don't see them as a contending team. I see the Clippers being a contender just because of their front office being so so strong and having uh, Jerry West and having one of the richest owners in the NBA, having a good veteran coach, and they have Paul George. I mean, there's other, there's other pieces in the team that are sturdy, but these guys aren't ego-driven guys. You know, um, they, they're team players like to Kawhi and Paul George. So I think they're gonna get a, they're gonna get along smoothly and they're gonna learn how to work with each other way faster than what's happening in LA with the Lakers and with their shitty front office and just having AD and LeBron. LeBron's focused on becoming this media mogul and AD's focused on becoming LeBron. So there's there's gonna be a little rough patch there and we don't even know if they're gonna work together. So all this hype. I think Kuwait made a good move by going to the Clippers and you'll see his production this year. I guarantee you that the Clippers are a third seed in the Western Conference and um, you could quote me on that. Now that the free agent, there's still like some pieces that could, can be bought and traded in free agency, but all the big names have gone. Jimmy Butler went to the Miami Heat. KD and Irving went to the Brooklyn Nets. AD and LeBron are going to play together. Kawhi and Paul George and... I know everybody says Westbrook is a big name, but at the end of the day, nobody wants to play with Westbrook. He's a ball hog. He cares all about his numbers. 
And if he gets traded anywhere, whoever he gets traded to, their superstar is not going to be happy. So buyers beware on, on Russell Westbrook. And uh, now to talk about my very disappointing weekend. Um, the, the fights were not disappointing at all. I think I'm just disappointed because I made all the wrong picks other than John Jones. And the fight I was most excited about turned out to be the most boring fight out of all of them. Um, obviously, everybody's talking about Ben Askren getting knocked out in five seconds. George Masvidal came out running. Um, there's a video of him practicing the knee he, he hit him with to knock him out. And I think they were looking at that. He says it was all spur of the moment, but they have videos. They told Dustin Poirier they were going to do this move at the beginning bell. So it was premeditated. And whoever his coach is did a great job at noticing that Ben Askren shoots down and puts his face down. I, I guess every wrestler does that, but to have the timing and the right side correctly and just baiting him the way George did was freaking impressive. I know the place I was watching it at went crazy. Everybody couldn't believe it. And um, I was in shock. I was, I was speechless. I, I didn't know that could even be a possibility, but I see George contending against um, Kamaru Usman. And I see Ben Askren maybe fighting Kobe Covington if they could talk enough shit. But it's not looking good for Ben, you know. Um, the next move for Ben was going to be obviously Kamaru Usman. They have a wrestling history and they have this shit talking history. And that's out the window now. Like, that's not going to happen at all. So it sucks for him. But at the end of the day, this is the fight game, and that does happen. Um, two other knockouts happened that night. Uh, Luke Rockhold got knocked out by Jan, and I am not even going to try to say his last name because it's Polish. You can look him up. But he knocked him out, and Holly Holm got knocked out too by Amanda Nunes, and I kind of saw that one coming. I thought Holly was doing a great job moving and dodging her punches and keeping the length with her feet, but at the end of the day, it only takes one punch. In this case, it only takes one kick to knock you the fuck out. And um, Amanda Nunes is pound for pound the best women's champion to ever be in the UFC. And she wants to fight Chris Cyborg next. So that should be interesting. Maybe Cyborg learned from the last time they fought, but most likely it's just going to end the same way. I'm a believer now. I'm a believer in Amanda Nunes and her power in her hands. But we all believed in Ronda. And Amanda and Holly Holmes ended up knocking her the fuck out. So we'll see what happens. Um, I'll admit when I'm wrong. So, you know, I can make my predictions. And in the fight game, in any sport, it, nothing's 100%. So in, in the spirit of admitting I was wrong, United States lost to Mexico. I didn't know Mexico's defense was so good. And... um I think they were just evenly matched. So whatever team was going to score the first goal at the end of the game was going to was going to win the game, you know. And uh, that goal came around the 80 minute mark and it just seemed kind of hopeless for the USA to even make a comeback. Um, I'm happy for them. I, I was root, I was secretly rooting for them. But at the same time, I, I just thought USA had a lot more firepower, better decision making. And it just turned out that wasn't the case. So congratulations to every Mexican. And it was a big win to beat them, not only for the World, in the World Cup, for the Gold Cup, but for just beating them, just being in the state that we are now with immigration. And I know a lot of people don't try to bring politics into sports, but some, it, it means a little bit. It's like a little win for the home team, right? I, I know Donald Trump is definitely not happy um, he could be happy about the women's soccer team, but even their captain doesn't like him. So he's not very happy right now. And so I, I call that a win. And that's all I have for sports. So moving on to trending topics. Um, if you know me, if you might even play with me, I'm a huge gamer. I, I love video games. If I could, I'd play video games 99% of my time, but um, I feel like a loser if I do it for too long. So I have my limits and um, Apex came out with their second season this uh, this past month and I've been fucking around with Watson. That's why I haven't talked to I, I wanted to talk about the release, but at the same time, 
I, did, I wanted to play the game and get an understanding to what they fixed from the first season. And they have a new character named Watson. She has an electrified field and she's kind of too hyped. I, I fell for the hype too. I bought the skins and I bought her and I played with her, but her defensive skills aren't that great. You, you kind of, if you play Apex, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, go play it, come back and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But her electric fence is really hard to, to, you have to be an engineer. You have to see where it's going to work. Um, gives you a little circle and you get like four of these prongs and each prong connects to the other and it doesn't allow an enemy to go through. And you could skip over this if you don't game at all. I know it could get a little technical and boring, but if you do like Apex, you'll, you'll understand my, my frustration with Watson was that it's more of a waiting game. It's, it's like you're setting a trap, but this trap isn't like caustics where you walk into a room and you see it at the last second and then it explodes into screen gas. You can see this fence from anywhere you go. So it's kind of hard to set it up and, and get people to walk through it. Um, a lot of people just run around or they throw bombs and they're very easily taken down. So my frustration with Watson is maybe have a little mis mystery element to her trap or to her defense thing. Um, maybe I'm not using it as good as I can, but a lot of YouTubers have had the same problem where they've had to get creative with it and it doesn't really work unless somebody's chasing you or in a zip line where they get bolted into this electric fence. It, it, it lacks luster and I think I'm just going to stick to Bangalore. You know, a Bangalore has smoke and her passive is really great. Um, Watson's main power sucks too you know what i mean so if you're gonna if they're all the same other than their their abilities you you you're better off just choosing somebody that has a better ability she looks pretty cool i'll admit that but um don't fall for that hype in other news um i want to talk about stranger things um like everybody else came out july 4th and i know some people watched it in one day i can't do that I'll, I'll fall asleep or I'll stop paying attention to what they're saying or what they're doing. But um, Stranger Things is like a culture phenomenon. You know, you it's in the 70s and it, it's just so spot on. The, the, the way the characters look, the music, the way they talk. It, it's crazy to me that it's like watching them back in time with better cameras. How about that? It's like a hyped up scary 70s show if you could say that so i enjoy stranger things um i think the plot's pretty good i didn't know where they were gonna go with it i thought you know as the seasons go on they, they run a little thin maybe i'm just having like ptsd from game of thrones and i'm scared to watch a show for too long before they ruin everything for us like game of thrones did but Stranger Things is definitely good. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely go watch it. It's a binge-worthy show, and I think it's a little predictable. It's a good show, but I, I'm i sitting there telling my girlfriend, oh, this guy's going to die, or oh, this happens, and it, it gets a little predictable. So, so I just like what they did with the show and the direction they took. I don't want to spoil anything because I know it's such a big show, but... And I'm still watching it, so I haven't gotten to the end. So I'll keep you guys updated to whether they ended it right or not. And where I think they're going to take the show after that. I'll give it some time so everybody could watch. And then we could do some predictions on where the show's going to go. So, And just to end things, um, I want to talk about the earthquakes from in California. Um, people are saying they feel bad because these people... Yeah, it, it sucks to lose your house and stuff like that, but... These people were warned. It's like the guy who gets told to evacuate in a hurricane and he stays home and then he needs to get rescued. And everybody's like, oh, that poor man's about to drown. But at the same time, that poor man was giving a warning and this moron didn't leave because he's so stubborn. So I think people in California, 
I, they know about the earthquakes. They know they're they're living on a landfall. They they know this is a possibility. So when it happens, well, why is everybody freaking out? You know, I'm sure there was one person in that whole state who was sitting going, yup, they told us this was going to happen and now it's happening. So you can't really feel too bad for them, you know. Hopefully they don't break off and go into the sea or something. At the end of the day, I, I don't feel bad at all for them. They, it's like you tell somebody year after year, there's no water and there's a lot of earthquakes and they're like, yep, we're still going to stay here. All right, then, then you're at your own risk, you know. Um, if you want somewhere safer, I guess you could say move to Chicago. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's safer when it comes to Mother Nature. Not safer about the people here. They're animals too, but aren't we all? All right, well, that's my show. And um, I know the viewership has gone down a little bit. I think everybody was kind of just tuning in to see the new thing. I And... Now that they've seen it, they, they don't really come back, but um, I'll keep trying to get more, more eyeballs on the show. And thanks to the people who still watch it or have subscribed. Um, if you haven't, please subscribe and like. And that's my show. Hopefully you liked it.